Have you heard of the Arata civilization? Over 20,000 years old. There's even evidence that they had built these incredible observatories approximately 22,000 BC. Ladies and gentlemen, Rex Bear Leak Project. How the heck are you? Beautiful day today out here in San Antonio. It's crazy coming from Colorado, Utah, New Mexico, having a chance to see the beautiful Rockies and then driving through Amarillo and Lubbock and many of these fracking towns in the northern part of Texas. Just a completely different reality, to say the least. But enough about that. I find this fascinating because I've been doing some research into these tablets that were discovered that predate the Sumerian culture and actually describe how the Sumerian culture took over this civilization and possibly rewrote history. How often do you hear the tell? You learn the stories of the victors. Well, what don't we know that we should know? Now, this is an image of Nippur when it was excavated. Excavated. Nanny, nanny, nanny. And this is an ancient Sumerian tablet as well, just to give you a little bit of visual stimuli. Now, I'm going to be discussing Ludagura, which was a Sumerian nobleman and poet, and he wrote about his life and what he saw, the Sumerian culture completely assimilating and taking over the cultures before that, before them. Very fascinating, to say the least. And it's all thanks to an incredible lady that lives in Turkey. I think she's 104 now. And I, I mean, just incredible, brilliant. So I'm going to have this pronounce her name here. Luazomie. Luazomie. That's the one I was looking for. All right, here we go. <laughs> Luazomia. 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 She is an author, incredible author and translator. This is a quick Wikipedia article about her life thus far, her educational credentials, her professional career, and the controversy that comes behind the incredible translations that she has done. I mean, she opens the door wide open, and I'm talking about Pandora's box here, when it comes to some of these ancient religions and what some of these, hmm, how do I put it, certain stories and tells and scriptures and prophets and prophecies and even headdresses, etc., well, she has a completely different description than most people would based upon the origins and information that she's put together. And she talks about how she's a scientist. She got sued once um, saying that she was using religion as a, you know, she was attacking religion. And the, the judge basically dismissed the case in less than an hour. So you can, you can read about it here. Very interesting. Now, this is the specific book that I wanted to discuss with you, some tablets that were translated, and this is describing the Sumerian Ludengura, which was an incredible poet and nobleman. So this right here is from arada, G-A-R-D dot uh, C-O dot U-K, and this talks about the origins of the Arata people previous to the Sumerian culture. And I've even shared with you some Sumerian tablets that describe how Inanna goes from the Arata civilization to the Sumerian and the transference of power. Now, also, I find it fascinating when reading through, let's go back here to this image right here, when reading through the, the tablets that she translated, I'm going to share parts of one and two with you here. Enlil is looked at as the superior god, and without Enlil, you wouldn't have life, because Enlil is the god of air, and you obviously have to have air to breathe, unless you're a fish, and then, well, that's a whole different story. Also, want to give a huge shout-out to Trade Genius Academy. 
Do you want to make money nearly every day trading cryptocurrencies regardless of the market's direction? In just the last two weeks, we are seeing changes in the stock and crypto markets that normally take an entire year. My friends at Trade Genius Academy understand this, and that's why they put together a complete program of trading and cryptocurrency educational courses that will teach you how to buy and sell whether the crypto market goes up or down. I trust these guys more than anyone out there to give you the real inside knowledge you need to be successful in trading and learning about cryptocurrency and trading the stock market. Trade Genius also has buy sell alerts that help average investors and professional investors get in and out of trades to make a profit. They have a win rate with cryptocurrency signals so far in 2017 and are repeating those statistics here in 2018. Right now, Trade Genius Academy is offering several package bundles at a 50% off sell, only good until midnight, March 31st. You can buy a $1,000 value for only $3.99 and more. Check them out, get educated, get invested in the digital future before it's too late. TradeGeniusAcademy.com, code Leak Project. All right, back to the show. Now, these clay tablets were found 100 years ago south of the so-called Mesopotamia, between two rivers, between the Dysel and Euphrates River. Before the date of this piece of tablets today, excavations began to take place north of Mesopotamia in old palaces and remains, temples, etc. The palace of the famous Assyrian king, Assurbanipal, who lived in the 7th century BC, his library with thousands of of these clay tablets were discovered. Scientists were not satisfied with the research, so with the help of these tablets and various previous finds, they were able to read articles and solve the language, and they gave their name to Akkad, the, the Akkadians. This first found tablet was written in the same article but the language was different. So they find this tablet that has a different language, and it is Ludengura describing what he has seen. And Ludengura means man of God. And he began to write these documents and put into Sumerian or into, into clay tablets, not Sumerian. <laughs> he, he created these documents. To, he wanted to make a difference. He said, hey, I'm not a very big person and I want to get this information out there so we don't lose, so our, our history isn't lost. So he, he begins to write this story and it is said that those days are not the Sumerian kings, but the strangers ruled the country. Now remember, the Sumerian king list goes back about 300,000 years, and there's missing parts of the Sumerian king list also. Now, what I am wondering is, is this whole thing fabricated? Is everything made up? I mean, was the conquering party, okay, we're going to take all of their creations and abilities and technologies and um, you know, architecture, agriculture, etc., assimilate all that, say we did it, and then just make up these timelines? Okay, well, we're going to base it on the the timelines of the stars. We're going to base on the timelines of these orbits of the planets, of the constellations and their movements. I don't know. I am definitely questioning this right now. And another thing, when you've got these corporations that control virtually all the information that you have access to, and if there's institutions that say they have the original history and they've spent tons of money to find that history and then something rewrites their history that they came up with, well, maybe they're too proud to admit it. Maybe they're too proud, so they're going to do everything they can to suppress it. So that all these institutions and religious falsities, these farces, these weapons of mass confusion, idiocracy at its finest, can run afloat and be prosperous while the truth is buried deeper and deeper and deeper. So, Ludinger writes this story, and also, there is a possibility that one of the stories in the Holy Bible in the Old Testament was actually a translation of one of 
Ludengura's love poems. So he's talking about these new rulers, the Sumerian languages that are very different from their origins began to be spoken. The lyric writes that he feels sorry for the civilizations that are going to be forgotten, especially by his compatriots. Now, by writing their own life for this, they wanted to convey to their generation what they knew, what they saw. And it has been very successful in this with these tablets. Now, in this story, there's there's a multitude of tablets. I'm only going to share parts of one and two with you. I would definitely recommend picking up this book. Definitely pick up this book. Now, here's the deal, though. It's in Turkey. Uh, so it's it, you have to translate it. I went to Google Translate, and I was able to translate the first two tablets. Let's go back here. So I'll leave the links in the video description box. Make sure to click this link. Pick up the book. Um, then you can translate it yourself. This is from 2000. This book came out in 2000. Now, this is a little bit more again. You know, once again, I'm just going to leave this here. You can see her biography, bibliography. Nanny, 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 nanny. Also, okay, so let's, let's go back to the storyline here. Let's go back here. So, in this story, New Year's Day, when Ludengura was just a boy, the days he spent at school as a student and teacher, the events he experienced, his first love, his mother's love, the deaths of his father and his wife, the characteristics of the house, where the city has lived. The stories of his gods. The two defendant courts he listened to. Also, how he went to the temple for sex. And the war memorials were written in a simple duel. They did not neglect to add their own poems, poems of their other poets to these stories. And then he describes why he writes these stories. He says, I am a Sumerian teacher, poet, and writer. Since I am 75 years old, I have already stopped teaching. My poetry and my writing will continue until they die. I began to write this lifestyle for future generations. Our nation, our language, our traditions, our social experiences are now forgotten. This beautiful, civilized country is looked upon from all sides. Our floats that float in the rivers we have opened. Our flooded overflowing ponds, our allotted terrains, our glorious temples, our glorious vessels, our caravans reaching everywhere. The reputation of our schools spread far enough to distant countries the people of these countries are primitive. The opportunity surged to us. They burned our cities, destroyed them. Our people, even our crimes, were captives. Our parents have disappeared. Our tarns, our gardens dry without care. Our animals died of starvation. Thus, our nation was rooted thousands of years ago, was torn down, unable to stand. Slowly leapt, they slowly leapt into us, leaving us in the arms of strangers who ate. They manage us now. Our grounding is primitive. They are beginning to become civilized. There was news of what was written, what was not from agriculture, nor from sanctuary, nor from the dynasty, or from the school, what was attended. What was the light they learned all about us. They began to boast. We did it. We found it. And this nobleman, Lungara, is concerned, so he felt it necessary to write these tablets. And then he goes on to say,
This has made me sad for years. I am a little man. I complain that it would not have happened to prevent this. So one day at a time came to mind. He says he's a writer. He decides to write to the young people who started to forget about their nationality and their achievements, their past, their traditions, how civilized they were. So that's why he writes this down. Now then he recalls his experiences from childhood. He says he's witnessed many things, researched archives, libraries. He gathered information around the clock. And then he wants to in introduce this bittersweet knowledge and these events and traditions and customs and beliefs. And then he goes on to say, Our beliefs, our gods, which have passed through our nation with my memories, I can remember. I will give examples from our poems, from epics, from books, how happy they are, if you can read them fast. Our civilization will pass to people who may be living thousands of years later, they're going to put the innovations of the bases we threw. They should also thank us for the cultural heritage we remembered and left. Ludengura's Life Story, Tablet 1. My poem Nippur, the father of all our gods, and the king Enlil, who is the greatest, we have settled some of the Karabasalar part here. The rest scattered among the cities of our other gods. Each of our cities under the control and protection of a god. You must be surprised that we are Karabasalar. Rightly, of course, a strange name for a nation. According to the results of research and rumors, they gave this name to themselves. Then, it goes on to describe how there's blonde-haired, blue-eyed people living in the land adjacent to the places where my ancestors used to live before the migration. So maybe they named it that way to separate themselves. How is a person with a yellow-haired, blue-eyed kind of visualizing? I cannot imagine that. It would be very nice. I have never seen such a thing in my country. We have black hair, black eyes, but do not think our skin is black. We are a little bit like wheat coloring. Now that's very interesting, folks, because many of these Sumerian tablets that I've read to you in the past talk about how they created the, the black-headed people. And we've speculated, does that mean that they've just got black hair? Does that mean they have black skin too? And now this is talking about blonde-haired, blue-eyed people and black eyes, black skin, and wheat, I'm sorry, wheat coloring skin with black hair and black eyes. Fascinating. So, Nippur was filled with many different people, and they come to boast. Nippur, Luyum, because being a Nippur is a great source of pride in our country. So, he is the leading city of summer, but don't think it's the capital. It was never the capital of Nippur, because a king has never lived there. But kings come to Nippur to crowns. In this way, we receive gifts that are blessed in the temple of Ikumur by our other great gods, especially our great lord Enlil and his esteemed wife Ninlil. I write what these gifts are, leaving you with a curiosity, a throne of divine notification, what is gathered, a long crown, a wand of control, the people, glorious and honorable name, a happy life, flood rivers, fertile lands, and floodplains, to my country. Enlil is the great tribute to our father's worthy temple, Ikur, to be brought forth from near far countries. Then it talks about gifts. Then it goes on to say, unfortunately, many of our kings did not know how to use these gifts properly, so he quickly lost his power. After all, whatever it is, it's being milled. What? It's in the mill. Checks in the mill. That's interesting. It's talking about these technologies and these gifts that they don't know how to use properly so they lose their power that's making me think of these i don't know like okay you've, you you get a f-35 someone says here i'm going to put this f-35 in your driveway 
And now you've got this incredible technology, but do you know how to use it? Can you get it off the ground? Can you even get a Cessna off the ground? Have you ever flown a Cessna before? Do you have a pilot's license? Have you ever gotten in a, have you seen those like lawn chairs that have giant propellers hooked up to the back of them? And they're like experimental crafts. So I don't know if you need a, you used to not need a pilot's license to have these. You might now, I don't know. But they've got these craft that you just hop on and they've they got these big propellers and, you know, parachutes. Well, could you fly one of those things? If someone parked a tank in your driveway, would you know how to use it? I mean, that's, that's what I am seeing with this. They, they, they're getting access to all these technologies from previous civilizations, but they don't know how to use it. And then you go through Blavatsky's work, Madame Blavatsky, H.P. Blavatsky, and people say, oh, she's a charlatan. Oh, it's, it's been proven that she's debunked. Oh, she summoned demons. Oh. Well, first of all, she specifically says in her book that she didn't summon demons, that that work was actually a translation of the book of Zion, starting with a D, where she translated these ancient stanzas of these different beings and peoples and colors, etc. And she talks about how the original beings that were formless, that were boneless, didn't want to come down here for a long time. And then when they finally did, the, the original people of Earth were superior in many ways, and each generation, they lost their abilities. They didn't get smarter. And a lot of what she talks about, that she wrote about hundreds of years, over 100 years ago, a lot of that has been coming to fruition now. They have been uncovering evidence of these different peoples on different parts of the earth and cultures, etc. And technologies and, and relics and information and history. It's all there, folks. And it's slowly, it used to be slowly being uncovered. I think now it's a lot, it's at a much faster pace because people like you, like me, and like others that listen to Leak Project are genuinely looking for the truth finding this information, putting these things together, putting these pieces of the puzzle together that has just been torn apart and thrown apart for so many years. We are now collecting it and putting it together, and it's getting faster. And the more we learn, it's like, okay, you open up one door, now you've got 10 other doors that have just been opened up of information that's flooding into your mind. The more you learn, the more you realize you don't know, yet that one door that you open just gave you access to 10 new doors of information and it's compounding. The information is just, it's fluid, it's liquid, it's lightning, it's light. It's incredible. It's beyond zeros and ones. Internal wisdom, external knowledge. And the description of Enlil, I find this fascinating when they describe Enlil. Um, Lord Enlil and his esteemed wife Ninlil, their greatest god and goddess, I write these gifts leaving you with a curiosity, a throne of divination, or I'm sorry, a throne of divine notification, what is gathered, a long crown, a wand to control the people, a glorious and honorable name, a happy life, flood rivers, fertile lands, flood plains to my country. Enlil is the great tribute to our father's worthy temple, Ikur, to be brought forth from near far countries. What important gifts are they? Unfortunately, many of our kings did not know how to use these gifts properly, so he quickly lost his power. After all, whatever it is, it's being melt. I'm telling you, that sounds like, okay, somebody's got access now to all of the defense mechanisms via cloud, via satellites, via Skynet, via digital tech. Well, if you've got somebody that's been studying this stuff for years and knows how to push the right buttons and what code to push and put in, etc., great, but then you put somebody in there that has no experience, then what? They don't even know what button to push. I pushed the button and elected him. All right, so Nine Inch Nail song. The button, capital G. Hello. What would you do? All right, so that's one of the questions that Trent Reznor asked. He's like, well, you know, you get all this power and then you don't care about anybody else, but you don't know because you've never had it. What would you do if you had that much power? You wouldn't care either. Is, is kind of what he says in that. That's one of the themes of the song. He brings a lot of different variables in each song that he writes, but that's definitely one of them. like, well, you know, you've never had that power. You don't know what it is, so shut up. <laughs> so, all right, let's go back to this. So the kings come not only to Nippur, but also to participate in the festivals 
held in our city, great honor and prosperity to us. Our gods bring abundant sacrifices. That's interesting. What kind of sacrifices are you probably talking about? Goats and cows and lambs, you know, big old dinner. So our gods bring abundant sacrifices. Our father, the great Enlil, eyes Napur, all over the country, give orders for things that other gods will do. When our gods will decide on a matter, Enlil will gather in Napur and the presidency of our father. Enlil is our father, the earth, the sky. Too long ago, everywhere, every side was admissal. A sea of goddess, Namu. One day the goddess gave birth to a Kaskoka mountain from the sea. Enlil, who saw this, immediately entered into it, divided it into two. Its upper part is the sky, its lower part the earth. So he took the sky, the name God. Okay, he took the sky, the name God, which means sky. The earth has become the goddess key, and Enlil, our father, meaning place, land of earth, stone. The Enlil of the Supreme is the air of breathing. Anyway, the name means good of the air. If there is no air, we can't breathe. There is no life, but no life without it. In our view, what cities would be established and settled without the Supreme Enlil? Neither stables nor brooches were made. Neither the king nor the priest was born. That's fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. So this is describing Ki, Enki, as the earth, Enlil as the heir of the earth. And this is looking at the gods and a point of they're there. Like, I wondered if Enlil was also a human form at that time or if Enlil was just looked at as the heir, as formless, or if he would also come into that form. Because it describes how Enlil was there with them and Nippur and other gods joined so are these actual deities, are these actual beings that can then manifest into air and then can condense themselves into a earthly being? So now he goes on to say, have we understood enough the size of our Enlil father and how valuable it is for us? Then it talks about other gods gathering around Enlil, the king of gods. Once again, Enlil called the king of gods. Sumerian scholars also wanted to be near him, so they began to settle in Nippur. Then arrivals formed separate neighborhoods east of the city so that they could also interfere, or so, the, so they wouldn't interfere with those without the knowledge. So they've got two, they've got, you know, a sub city there. The less desirables, it sounds like. The neighborhood grows up, and it's now like a separate city. And then he goes on to say, I live in this neighborhood. Do not stay home. According to the order of our supreme Enlil, every child must go out of his father's path, take his profession. Gathering of knowledge into Pur has become a city where all sorts of learning is done in summer. The best the ones who want to learn the deepest are running here. Books, schools written here, copies are sent to other cities. Thus, the basic education is provided at the same level in each city. God Enlil, and secondly, as a center of science and education, everyone running here wants to live here. Here we are, our Nippur, the first holy city and the pupil of summer. Because of the place of our great god Enlil, and secondly, secondly nanny, nanny, a center of science and education. Merchants, clothing, food, production, consumption. And it's increased so much that you've got people coming from all over bringing in their, their donkeys and their product <laughs> to sell their goods as well 
Nippur, the great gods, the scholars, the artists, the great temples, the beautiful houses, the smooth roads, the streams, the skylines, the parks, the gardens have been the most splendid place for ages and rightly got the title of Life City. Wow, that's interesting. I didn't know that either. So then, goes on to say, Ar Nippur is governed by a king and sign. He is responsible for all affairs of the city. He has great respect for the heads of all other cities, for he has ruled the city of our God Almighty. They all come to his feet with many gifts and sacrifices, but he does not go to nothing to shrink himself. Now, I don't know what that, that means. And this is translated from Turkish to English. So then he wants to put together a map showing where, our showing where the city is. Then he tells his friends who are experts in putting together maps. And that's tablet two. Once again, I I'm just paraphrasing this and I'm giving my interpretation. And this was translated from Turkish to English via Google Translation, which is awesome, by the way. I mean, it's real easy to do that. I would definitely recommend picking up this book. I'm going to see if I can get an expert on the show that um, maybe speaks Turkish. I'm going to attempt to get somebody on the program that is an expert in Sumerian. And reading through this, it still just leaves so many variables open for possibilities. I mean, describing God Enlil as the God of air, does that mean that they look at God as air? Or does Enlil actually come down in a physical form and say, hey, here I am? And it describes the king of Nippur as a very noble individual, a very kind individual. It doesn't sound like an overly boastful, overly zealous, what do they call him? Um, megalomaniac, or maybe not megalomaniac. Um, a lot of these kings, at least that, the, the version that we learn about them, they seem to be very sure of themselves. Very, very sure of themselves is the nicest way to put it. I mean, we go back 20,000 years, 22,000 years, or 22,000 BC, that's 24,000 years ago. And observatories that are 24,000 years old that can see the planets, can see the stars, and then that civilization gets overthrown by barbarians. And then they just copy that information and say, oh, this is us. This is from us. How many times has that been done in the past? How long have we really been here? What version of humanity is this right now? Now, according to Blavatsky, this is version five. This is number five. Will level six be the transhuman AI setup where robotics... Our down, like we download our consciousness into the cloud or into robotics and our bodies are now made out of titanium alloy and graphene. Our bodies could be a nanobiotech that could infuse and create other tech that could self-replicate where one minute you could be a, a very fast motorcycle, one minute you could be a Jeep, one minute you could be a supersonic hypersonic jet all by transforming your mind connected to the nanotechnology. Because if your mind, if you can download your mind into a nanotech that can self-replicate, then you've literally got your mind encapsulated in these nanotech robotic mechanisms that will self-replicate. And then you can take that and you can self-replicate into any structure that you want to. I mean, you can essentially throw some nanobots into some sewer water and, and make a supercomputer. You just have to teach those nanobots how to rewrite at the molecular level, which they are working on right now. They just have very large machines that are doing it. Remember looking at this thing that looked like a, a monster-sized telescope. But it's a microscope. But it's more than a microscope because it was actually moving atoms at the molecular level. You know, moving these molecules, and it can see what it's doing. You get that happening at a fast pace, connected with autonomous systems, cloud networks, and technology, vibrational frequencies. 
you get information to flow through vibrational frequencies similar to 5G, but you find a way to do it to where you're not having to run at 30 gigahertz speeds. You know, 30 gigahertz, that's in the millimeter band. Now you're in the microwave bands. You're microwaving people with technology, literally. They're microwaving people for faster download speeds with 5G. When I say 5G, now 5G is fifth generation. They've got other stuff out there that's running 800 megahertz that's 5G. T-Mobile wants to have a whole bunch of those around the, the country. But then you've got other... Uh, telecom giants saying, oh, that's not real 5G. That's not quick enough. You need you need at least 28 gigahertz for the real fast stuff. Okay. Welcome to the new New World Order, ladies and gentlemen, where they love you so much. They love you so much, they will do anything they can to get you to become the Borg. Now, if you go to leakproject.com, you should check it out, leakproject.com. Got about 1,600 podcasts here at leakproject.com. Downloadable, streamable, ad-free. I have hundreds of podcasts exclusive to leakproject.com, only available at leakproject.com. Also go to youtube.com slash clandestine time lord. Make sure to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. That way you'll get access to the live shows. You'll get access to the latest podcasts. I've got a lot of on the horizon for Leak Project, ladies and gentlemen. I want all of you to be a part of this, and I want to thank everybody that's been a part of this so far. Um, I wish that I could respond back to every email and still do as many shows as I do. I would need more time for that. So if I don't get back to your email, please don't take it personal. I might not have even read it. I literally get hundreds of emails a day. Keep trying. We'll cross paths when we're supposed to. And I want to thank everybody that's hit the super chat. I want to thank everybody that is a premium member at Leak Project. I want to thank everybody that's purchased one of these Leak Project hats. Now I've got, um, now that I'm back, I think the liners are at the, uh, the post office. I'm going today to see if the liners are in. So everybody that's purchased a hat thus far, um, I'm going to get your liners mailed out to you. Those liners go inside the hats that help shield from certain EMF frequencies. The new ones that are coming out actually have these liners built into them. They're a little bit different than this limited run of 33 that we did. And there's still a few of those available, ladies and gentlemen. If you want to get one of those custom Leak Project tinfoil hats, limited edition, signed for authenticity, 33 in total. No, I'm not a Freemason. Why give them all the credit? I know some really cool Freemasons. I'm just saying, no, I'm not a Freemason. Um... I have not assimilated to any Borg society either. And the number 33 is actually a very powerful number if you study numerology. It's pretty cool. We the people have the right to use those numbers too, ladies and gentlemen. You don't have to be a part of a secret society or a mystery school to embrace specific numbers and to learn about the frequency and the harmony and the vibrational tones connected to each number each letter, each symbol. We live in amazing times, don't we? We live in amazing times. So thank you, everybody. Also, support our sponsor, which in return will help you support yourself, which in return also helps Leak Project. It's a win, win, win. Trade Genius Academy. Get that 50% discount. Use the code Leak Project. Be excellent to each other, ladies and gentlemen. Be the change you want to see.